Hi. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Yes. Thanks for being here and doing ah, this. It's so we're exciting. so exciting. <laughs> Can you tell? Can you tell how excited we are, you guys? <laughs> we're excited. Hey, everyone. Oh, so excited for this two-day stream with Lauren Jones. Um, please say hi to us in the chat. Um, tell us where you're watching from. We are so excited to dive right in, but just to do a little bit of housekeeping, um, we're starting a new set of Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges. Thank you to Howard Pinsky for doing all of those. And those are every day at 9 a.m. in the morning uh, Pacific time. So don't miss out on these new challenges. You can register for them right above the chat um, and they're just great for learning and you know kind of sharpening up your skills uh but yeah oh, so exciting how are you doing lauren i'm great mm -hmm. so excited to have you as my host we're real friends well we are we're, real internet real, friends yes real internet friends so i think that counts i think it counts i think it counts um but where are you at right now so i am in denver colorado um, and you I'm just recently Georgia. moved there. Yes. I did. I moved here about a month ago, <laughs> loving it so far, getting Yay. connected to the local Colorado scene. Hey, if you're yeah. from Colorado, please say hi in the chat. Let yes, us know. Please. Okay? Or from Georgia. Let me or know. Or from Georgia. Um, you know, shout out. <laughs> uh, all right. We've already got some people in here. Yeah. Uh, clever fairy. Fairy said he was really excited for this. So, yes. you know, we've got a lot of excited people. So hi, Michelle. We've got Jose from Miami. Robert says hi, Lauren and Arabella uh and hi hi steve Ugh, so many people and you it's i love adobe live because it's so international and you've got people chiming in from everywhere so um yeah and just really quickly too if you are watching on youtube make sure to come on over to behance because then you can interact with lauren and ask her questions um she's got you know a lot of knowledge and she's is ready to share all of that with you so um, so you can head on over to be.net slash Adobe Live um, and come join us over here. So, uh, Lauren, we have some really exciting stuff that you're doing today. Something that's kind of new for Adobe Live. <laughs> I know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We're going to be doing a little live shoot for you guys with a model and studio and then hopefully taking that raw photo that you see being shot all the way to final post-production. Oh, so exciting. Well, just um, for everybody who doesn't know you, would, would you be able to give us a little quick intro and show us a little bit of your work as well? Yes. So bold, Happy. so vintage or like retro. Oh, I love you it. You nailed it. That's, <laughs> that's exactly how I describe my work is like bold, colorful, colorful. nostalgic. Yes. Nostalgic. Ugh. Um, but yeah, I would, I consider myself like a fashion portrait photographer currently based in Denver. Um, I've been a photographer the last five or six years and, um, I was an in-house photographer for a creative agency, Focus Lab. Um, and now I've been a freelancer for now a year and a half. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Ugh. A year and a half, which if, if you know, that was the start of COVID. It was also yeah. the start of my freelance journey, which oh my gosh, bad timing, but it honestly <laughs> worked out. It worked out better. You that took way. the plunge and you know, you went for it. I went for it. And if yep. I can, if I can do it during COVID do it whenever. So yes. Yeah. So hopefully that inspires all of you out there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. I'll scroll through a little bit of yes, my site. Please do. Um, yeah, you can kind of see, like, I really fell in love with more of like the art direction and styling. And I feel like that comes through. It was almost like I became a photographer to capture my vision that I had in my head. I was like, you know, the best, if I want to you know, I want to create this vision. The best way to showcase the vision is for me to take it myself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's my, that's one of my favorite series of yours. <laughs> this. Yeah. Yep. This was for, um, a restaurant, the fat radish. And we just wanted to show like all the different, like crazy different, like caricature, like caricature, you know, different types of people eating here. And we yeah, love, we yeah. called this like late, like the lady of a hundred cocktails. Cause there's one <laughs> shot where she just has her whole table is just full of like beautiful drinks. Oh my I feel gosh. like me and you identify with just beautiful we, drinks. Yes. Beautiful cocktails, beautiful yes. garnishes. We are all about it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. We've got some people. Let's see. We have, um, oh, fairies from Indonesia, Marsha from Toronto, Canada, uh, Christy from Roseville, California. Hello. Hi. And we also have Chris Olson from Colorado. Hey. Amazing. <laughs> Tony from Vancouver Island. Oh, so exciting. And thank you, Cody, for plugging in Lauren's uh, website and her Instagram. So make sure oh. to go follow her. Give her some love. Instagram is Hey, it's Lauren Jones, right? Okay. Perfect. I love when people link things like people yeah. are the best. Cody, so nice. she's the best. She's the best. So cool. 
she's our she's our little chat moderator and she's awesome so thank you amazing yes thank you (laughs) Ooh, yes i love that pool shot as well but yeah you i mean you definitely i feel like you see some themes throughout my work like i love photographing women and just people with stories Mm -hmm. um and the other thing you'll notice is i love photographing food but not just food like i love just adding elements of food in in my photography Uh you'll see a lot of cakes in my work (laughs) a lot of cocktails love that that's so exciting yeah and i would say like i call myself a fashion photographer but really like i work with a lot of tech clients and startups and brands that aren't necessarily fashion a lot of cannabis brands here in colorado Mm -hmm. um but still putting that sort of fashion twist on it which i think kind of gives me my style yeah absolutely and that like retro part of it too that's very very you so this is this model right here Voss, is who we're going to be shooting today so So we have a live model a live model so exciting and exciting yeah lauren can you explain a little bit about like how you're going to make this happen because yeah you know i'm just as excited to to learn and to watch you do your thing we're blazing new trails (laughs) today guys seriously we'll see how it goes you're in for a treat you're in for a treat and i love that you suggested this too I think that's yep. awesome. And I think it also will help some people to kind of like, as, as you take them through from start to finish, you know, very much like starting with directing the model and like, you know, lighting and, and all of this stuff. So I'm we're exactly. Very yeah. And like, feel free along the way, like ask me what yes. equipment I'm using, ask me like why I made this decision or anything. Like that's what I I'm here to answer questions. Yes. Yes. So you heard her, uh, ask her questions. I will, I will relay them. <laughs> um, Elisa Davis says, Lauren is the best. Oh my gosh. That's my mom. <laughs> oh, hey mom. And Jason James is in here too. Oh, Jason. Hi, Jason. <laughs> Another photographer friend. Yes. I love it. Love when some of, you know, people from our community yes. chime in here. That's awesome. Uh, I um, love it. Did we want to go through just here's Instagram? Yes. Amazing. I, a lot of my newer work is on here. Here's Voss again, who we're going to see today. Love it. Ugh. And okay, wait, so let me get this right. You were also a model before. Yes. So I love, I think that's so interesting how you transitioned then to becoming like this photographer, art director. Yeah. And I think I, I feel like that comes through in my work and the work I love. Like I, you know, was a model for however many years, kind of like all through high school and college. And I just, I found myself like loving the behind the scenes part of it even more. Like just so interested in the art direction and the styling and the hair and makeup and all of that. And I I just got super into that. And also my mom was a photographer growing up. Oh my gosh. And so, well, at first I was like, no, I don't think that's for me. It's what my mom did. I can't be a photographer. Like I want to do a different art, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's why I just kind of felt like, oh, the modeling, the styling thing, that's for me, not the photography. And then it just kind of, my mom was right. Because she always knew. She was like, you would be the best photographer. Just do this. And she was right. And I think that says a lot too. having been on the other side, as far as modeling, then like, you know, what makes models comfortable and you can understand yeah, and communicate with it's them. It's intimidating and, and it's it awkward. Mm-hmm. So, and especially like I, I work with a lot of, you know, if I'm working with a, I don't know, like a lifestyle shoot and they're not models. And I honestly love working with people who aren't necessarily like trained models and just kind of getting them out of their skin and like getting them to love a photo of themselves. I feel like it's so hard for people to be like, to actually like a photo of themselves. So that's, I make that my mission to make everyone have a photo they love of themselves. Love that. So professional hype woman add to the resume. Yes, (laughs) Yes. honestly, I feel like that's half of being a photographer. It it really is. Being a hype hype person. (laughs) I love it. Well, yeah, let us get started if you're ready. Perfect. Um, I'm ready. Yeah. And kind of walk us through your process of, of even just tethering and all that. Yep. Um, very exciting yeah. stuff. All right. Well, I am in Lightroom. Okay. Um, is this the classic, right? Lightroom classic. And so it is awesome that you can tether through Lightroom. It's one of my favorite features. So I go up here to file, tethered capture, start tethered capture. And so I, I had already started kind of this folder with Voss. It's just kind of a little test earlier today. So I'm just going to open that. Amazing. And then it's going to detect camera. And when it says this, you want to just kind of like press on your um, camera trigger, which I'm going to do now. Okay. 
So I love that this is like right behind you. <laughs> Literally right behind me. And I was like, how do I do this? How do I set this up? And um, for context, I wouldn't normally like sit here away from my model behind me <laughs> right. and shoot, you know, but but I am I feel like I'm kind of showing like how interesting it is, you know, shooting through Lightroom because let's say you're a product photographer and like, you know, your scene is on the ground and your, your camera's up here. You don't have to like hold your camera there. You could just hit this Lightroom right. trigger essentially. Yeah. And you exactly. can change all the settings from your Lightroom. So it's awesome. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that I wouldn't normally just like have my back toward, <laughs> towards my model. But and I think usually... kind of an interesting challenge, right? It's like, it you is. don't get to communicate it through like face or, I mean, I don't know if you're planning on and looking back or anything, but, um, it's kind of an interesting little, uh, yeah, it is know. a challenge for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Know. Well, I have my amazing model here, Voss. You're oh. going to go ahead and hop in the set and follow Voss on Instagram too. You have an amazing Instagram. It's V-A-S dot H-A-L. I'm sure some of their followers are already in the chat too. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, Rachel says, love your work, Lauren. Thank you. Viola says the colors are brilliant. So very awesome. exciting stuff. Cool. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little test shot here. Don't give me Perfect. your best smile yet. <laughs> So we're rocking some like incredible vintage <gasps> oh leather gosh. chaps here. The hat though. That Voss found at some random thrift shop for like, what was it like $5 or something? <laughs> A good 10 bucks. <gasps> 10 yep. bucks, you guys. Oh okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just start kind of like rapid triggering Voss. So just kind of do your thing <laughs> and I'll direct as we go. So what's your lighting setup? What's, what's, so it is yeah, super, tell us about that. It's super simple. I just have one strobe it's a okay. godox explorer and it's just it's on a light stand kind of above my camera like pretty close to as you can see like that shadow that kind of shadow yep so it's it's kind of it's kind of direct um and i love that just really harsh shadow it feels like sunlight and feels kind of like raw and gritty yeah especially against that yellow too against that yellow exactly all right Ugh. awesome i'm gonna do a couple more here I love that. And what are your settings that you've got set up for? Yep. For so I'm shoot? on um, shutter speed 200, which if you know anything about studio lighting, right. you're always at 200 unless your light, your light needs, I don't know, 250 or something like that. Yeah. But almost always at 200. My aperture is five and my ISO is on four. And I'm, I think my light is on one sixty fourth at the moment. Nice. Nice. Um, Marsha's asking, can you go over how you tether? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you saw in the beginning where you go, oops, my light went out. <laughs> oh, image not captured. Okay. Uh, let me just give it a second to do its thing. Oh, yeah. Do your thing. Um, <laughs> so to tether, you just go file, tether capture, and you do start tether. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe when you are setting up a, you have to like add your camera, your like specific camera model to Lightroom. Um, I think just if you're, when you're first starting or if you're switching from like Canon to Nikon or something. Sure. And you use, um, like a cable, right. To kind of connect. Oh, yep. Yep. So we use, um, I use a tether pro cable. I think they're kind of like the only like tether cords around, like <laughs> that orange so cord that everyone yes. knows. Yes. Yeah. You just tether straight into your camera. I have a super long, it's like 10, a 10 foot long tether cord. Cause it can never be, never be long enough. It can never be long enough, especially when you're working with models too. Like you have to really like step back exactly. or, you know, you have to have that flexibility. Yep. Yeah. I love, Ooh, I love this. I love yes. that one too. Okay. Oh, okay. Boss is okay, serving boss. some looks. Serving some looks. I love it. I love it's just happening behind I you. Know. It's amazing. I, I feel bad because I usually am like, you know, when I'm going to hit the trigger and you're just getting like blinded by this light every now and then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's a real pro, a real pro that can just shoot. Yeah. Like, that's a great pose. Oh, that's a good one. Tattoos are popping here. So what are, oh, we've got some good questions coming up. Let's see. Fairy says, what brand and what is the type um, for your studio light? So it is the Godox Explore mm -hmm. 600. I had to look. Okay. <laughs> I And I love them. I literally could not recommend them enough. Um, if you can't afford pro photos or just don't want to spend yeah. 
money on the pro photos like these are definitely the, the next best us. thing yes yes yeah. are you using any modifiers or anything i'm not it is just, so just like bearable? just like bearable wow on the background that's amazing yep and, and you know for like a softer kind of shoot i would my other favorite modifier is like a eight foot softbox like i just mm -hmm. love that like kind of it's it's like dramatic but also still really soft and feathery yeah but i would say if you look on my site and instagram nine times out of ten i'm doing this like really harsh light yeah and you'll see yeah. you'll see why i do that when i go to edit um but yeah i just love that i love that harsh shadow i love that so much that's perfect all right boss um, i'm gonna keep triggering perfect yeah yeah Oh, Kristen says, this is such a great live. I love Lauren Jones work. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Yay. Amazing. Oh, that's a great host. Yes. I love that. And what would you say are like your direct, I mean, you're not, I know you're not like directing at this moment, but because <laughs> you're talking to us, yep. <laughs> but what would be your directing tips? Oh, look yeah. at that little smile. <laughs> I know we love a smile. I know. I'm sorry. You can't hear this boss, but, but it's, people are loving it. People are loving it. Um, my, so a couple of my like go-to tips are, I always tell the models, look at the camera only eight out of 10 times. I, I feel like the, what, what models, they just think they have to stare into the camera's eyes the whole time. And really like, especially for me and the work I like, I like these sort of like candid moments. Obviously like yeah. this isn't candid because it's a very like sculpted shoot, but I like when, you know, poses are just like less posy. And so that's why. Like you don't always have to look at the camera. Um, yeah. And then my other tip for directing is to make angles with your bodies, like to make shapes. Yes. Um, and it looks like Voss is doing exactly that right he's, now. Like he's working the camera, like yeah. tr different triangles. Yeah. Like moving the knee, moving the elbows, like mm -hmm. that's my other direction. And I love like, let me go back one. Like I love the shadow that that yeah. just made. Ugh, that's so cool. Exactly. I think sometimes it works well too when you can like give direction and then like whatever the next moment after the direction happens like exactly. those are the like those candid moments that you're talking yeah. about that work really and, well and too. I know models like or you know especially when they're starting out they get stuck they're like oh I just don't know what next and it's like usually whatever you do after that little freak out is what's good yeah you know what I yeah. mean they're like oh I don't know what to do next and then it's kind of like they just stop trying to pose for a second yeah and it's like yes. oh that was it yeah Absolutely. I love that. Um, let's see. We've got some people chiming in. Fairy says, Godox has a lot of budget equipment for lighting. Some pros in my area are using it too. Even the one who has been doing photography photography for 50 years plus. Wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, Godox is a great brand. I think it's a great brand, like very durable, brand. like the color consistency is really great, which I think is important when it comes to mm -hmm. especially studio photos. Yeah. Okay. Love that shot. Okay, and here I'm going to adjust my ISO because okay. I felt like I was getting a touch dark, which is just amazing that I can do it from right there. Yeah. Let's see if that helps. Oh, yeah. Did it do anything? I feel um, like it did something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you never know sometimes. Okay, yeah, I like that like bright, crispy that. look. Okay, I feel like seeing these like crates is reminding me of that challenge that everyone's doing. Oh about my the gosh. Crates. Okay. That did come into my mind. I was like, oh no, I hope no one thinks I'm like doing this crate thing to like be relevant. <laughs> relevant. <laughs> Especially with Voss like putting a foot on there and trying to like stand on it or walk on it. That's hilarious. Oh, so good. But I love the colors. I love the colors. Yes. Amazing. Yeah, let us know in the chat, you guys, if you if you guys um, tether through Lightroom or, you know, if you if you guys do fashion photography, like chime in. Um, Andrea says, is there a sp specific reason for ISO 400? Well, I know you just changed it to 500, but, you know, not really there. So it's like yes and no. Like I with my light, um, I'm on 164th and then I had it at 128 and it just felt a little bit too dark. So it was mm -hmm. almost like the ISO was almost like my in-between solution. Um, yeah. So it's like, I, you know, cause you can either go brighter on the light, but I felt like the light was just getting a little bit too harsh. So I wanted like kind of an overall, just a couple yeah. steps brighter. Yeah. That's what's great too, about like being able to just kind of fix it right then and there in the exactly. in light room. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And see, sometimes every now and then your light just doesn't want to just do doesn't want to do light thing. things. Yeah. 
you know, Ooh. you got, you got to respect that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and then, um, in a second here, just so everyone knows, I'm going to kind of go through these and star them with ones. Amazing. Um, and then I'm going to have the chat pick which one we edit. So, love it. Love it. Yes. So is this like your studio? Um, how do you, um, how are you having that like, uh, background, the yellow background up on the wall? So, um, so the, what's behind this, so this white background is an eight foot seamless. Ah, okay. And then this is just like one of those little like four foot seamlesses that I just kind of like threw up on top of the nice. eight foot seamless. That's so fun. It's so simple too, but it like can add so much. To so simple. Image. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm actually in my apartment at the moment. Like I, you know, Ooh. for for bigger shoots, you know, I'll, I'll rent a studio, but for like small kind of like one person shoots where there's not a crew, yeah, I just shoot in my apartment. Yeah. And what's the gear that you're working with? Like your camera, your lens? Yeah, all I that? am using a Canon R5. It's the mirrorless one. I think me and you were talking about that maybe yes, of like mm-hmm. the mirrorless game. Like, do you switch? Do you not switch? Yeah. <laughs> I made the plunge um, and, and I'm, I'm ecstatic. Like, I don't, I don't think I can go back to not mirrorless, especially when shooting people, like it's, yeah. it is such a game changer. Like actually, so me and Voss, if you go to my Instagram, that, um, shoot of us in the field, mm-hmm. like, I don't think I ever could have pulled that off with a, you know, normal DSLR, like not mirrorless because it has the, this eye tracking and you're uh. able so like, it was able to track Voss's eye through like the weeds in the field. And like her eye was like super crispy, clear. Wow. Yep. Okay. That's amazing. That's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. I was about to say, this is an, not a Canon sponsorship. This is like a mirrorless, just like, I didn't yeah. think, cause I, ju- I just love like the click, you know, of yeah. just, a, of a shutter. So I was like, I don't know if I can go to mirrorless, but right <laughs> now I can't go back. <laughs> now you can go back. All right. Well, good to know. You heard it here first, you guys. <laughs> um, Barry's asking, how do you make a pose look natural? Quotes. <laughs> hmm. How do you make a pose look natural? I... <laughs> truly i think it's confidence yeah like if you are just not confident you can make any pose look natural if you are confident about it and honestly as a photographer when i'm looking for models i'm only looking for that confidence factor because i know that they're going to be able to pull off whatever situation i put them in Mm -hmm. and they can make anything look natural (laughs) i love that smile i love that smile too Okay, tell Voss he's doing a great job. Voss, you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> yes, love it. <laughs> Serving us all the looks. <laughs> Aw, Nurse says, Voss is like Lucky Luke. <laughs> yes. I don't know who that is. Lucky Luke, I don't know who that is either. I know, let us let us know, Nurse. Um, Creative Christy says, okay, so Lightroom is cool because you can adjust your camera settings through it. I love it. Yep. So cool. And another feature that's really cool too that I usually don't utilize because I don't do product photography but you can, this little live button, Mm -hmm. um, it lets you live see what your camera is seeing. So like, especially if you're doing like an, you know, an over, an overhead situation and you're kind of like adjusting a very stylized stylized thing. Yeah. And instead of like testing to see if, oh, did I nudge that product too far? Like you're able to like live, see what your camera sees. So you can adjust it real time. That's really cool. I wonder if that's like somewhat new because I don't remember that being there. That's awesome. Cool. And then uh, let's see. <laughs> Tony says, does Photoshop tether? Hmm. I don't think it does. No, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Just because Photoshop does a lot. <laughs> it Yeah. I think it would be too much. It would be too especially much because I feel like Lightroom, what it's great for is like photo organizing. So like I wouldn't even want hundreds of photos going into Photoshop. You know what I mean? Like it's good for just like photo cataloging. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And I'll say we'll do a few more poses okay. here and then we can start Perfect. kind of choosing. Uh, Creative Christy says hashtag Canon fan. <laughs> Canon fan. And Nurse says Lucky Luke is a comic character, a lonesome cowboy. Ooh. Uh, boss, you know who Lucky Luke is? Okay. No. Nope. <laughs> He's like, nah. <laughs> but um, amazing. I love that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Bill Kenny says, yo, Lauren, you are a pro. Hey, the Focus Bill. Lab fam misses you. Sweet. Miss Aww. you too. That's the creative agency I worked at before I went freelance Aww, that I was I mentioning. Love that. I love that. I love supportive. So agencies. supportive. <laughs> 
Um, Rachel says, loving this shoot, love your vibe, Lauren. Um, Fairy says, for tethering, you can choose whether you want to use your camera software or Lightroom Classic. Oh, interesting. Love it. Boss, you are serving the most looks right now. Yes. You are giving I mean, me variety. Honestly, it's going to be really hard to choose uh, yeah, between these. I know. I'm like scared to take more photos because I don't I know, know how I'm going to choose. I know. I don't know how. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tony's asking what lens you were using. I'm using the 28 to 70. I think okay, it's 1.4. Nice. It's the, it's also like the mirrorless Got it. lens and who it is. It is nice. It's sexy. Like that is a <laughs> nice lens. Um, yeah. And I, I, I was never a zoom lens person until oh like this one just got really great reviews and it's just zoom is just so easy. Okay. I've been a zoom girl for as long as I can remember. So okay. I, I, I can understand. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, get, a, I, get it. I was like all 35, like I, uh, 35 yeah. was my ride or die. But now that I have just the 28, like I'm like, I, maybe I need a 20 now. Like I just, especially for fashion, like you, I just yes. love that yes. drama, the drama. Yes. I love it. Love the drama. <laughs> love that one. I love it. Ooh, Fairy says, what is your dream camera for your future project? You know, that's that's a great question for a couple of reasons because I am not a I'm not a tech gear person. I'm really not. Like I sort of get the gear when I need the gear. Like I don't I, I, I usually just don't even know what's out there until someone's or until like some of my gear breaks. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. I guess I should get something else. And the mirrorless the mirrorless thing, I was like, okay, there's a new camera. I need a new camera. And that was kind of the best mm -hmm. one to get. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't even know if I have a dream camera. Someone would have to no. tell me what my dream camera is. And I'd be like, oh, that does seem like a good idea. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. All right, boss. I think I think he nailed it. I think we're done. Oh, not to end on the one the light didn't go off, but ooh, that one's fire. He nailed it. Yeah, good job, boss. You can come wave to the camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, and check him out. I'm sure yes. it, on your Instagram page, right, Lauren? Yep, Voss Hall on Instagram. You will not Amazing. regret it. Amazing, love it. Okay, so from here, I'm going to quickly go back kind of towards the beginning-ish and then oh, star some of my tough. favorites. Maybe we can involve the chat too. Yeah. I think we'll need some help deciding because... For sure. Oh, I'm, and I'm too good. Yeah, I'm going to kind of... We're kind of getting started here. Oh, I think this is our test before we started. started. So how do, how is your... What's your process for like culling? Um... So my like, I don't know, physical process is <laughs> going through starring everything as a one, um, starring everything that I like. And then I will, as I sort of edit, then I'll dwindle down and I'll, you know, I might make some of the ones a zero if I don't want them anymore. But my, the more of like where my heart, call, you know, calling from like, oh, what feels right? Yeah. Um, it, that's such a hard question to answer because I feel it like- <laughs> Like, you know, if I was calling these images versus you, you might pick a different one. That's you true. Know? It's so subjective. And it is so subjective. I, But I do feel like I'm pretty heartless when it comes to it. Like, <laughs> I feel like some people are like image hoarders or they, they're like really trigger happy. I yeah. would say I'm the opposite. Like, I'm very choosy. I know when I got it. Mm -hmm. And like for the images, I'm like, okay, cool. Those are the two I like. I'm not yeah. going to do anything with the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Okay, I like that one. I'm going to start it. Maybe when I find one that I like, I'll tell you why I like it. Maybe that can kind of get to helpful, the bottom yeah. of it. I think we can then we can kind of decipher. Yeah. I like this I one, like but it. there's one similar that I think I like better. But, you know, I'm going to start it just in case. Just in case. Just in case. I don't want to lose it. Yes. I, mean, I know because once great. you start going through everything, then like it all kind of starts blurring together in a way. Yeah. <laughs> they all look the same. Exactly. I mean, I love that smile. So cute. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cody, for plugging in um, Vaz's Instagram. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, Barry says the one where he is touching his hat is the best one. <laughs> this one? There's a lot of hat touching ones, but. I know there's a lot of good ones. Um, Nick Jones put a little heart. Oh, Nick. Hi. He's <laughs> basically in this apartment with me. That's my husband. Oh, 
Um, Tyler Lively says, love you, Lauren. You are a whole Hi, vision. Hi, Tyler. Oh, my God. You're oh. here. Hi. We've got lots of friends in the Tyler, chat. Tyler is my hairstylist and also Voss's oh. hairstylist in Savannah. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. I love it. Community, man. Yes. Love it. <laughs> well, if you guys are just joining us, we are here with Lauren Jones. She just finished this amazing shoot with Voss. And um, now she's kind of going through and kind of making her selections and... Yeah, let us know. Once you find a good one, let us know why you why you absolutely love it. Okay, so I do love this one. Yes. And I feel like because the light is hitting Voss's face, which is kind of the most important thing to light up. Mm -hmm. And then like we're getting this sort of uh, um, all different angles. Like an S-curve situation. Have you, heard, you went to art school, right, Arabella? <laughs> well, I actually did advertising and, okay. um, and photo. I did a photo minor, but... Yeah. I was going to say, I went to art school and every art school kid knows Contrapposto. Have you heard oh, of this? Oh, I have heard. Uh, yes. It's like all the Greek statues yes. are, yes. they. Ha it's and it's like you said, it's like that S curve. So it's like yes. your knees bent one way and then your hip is bent the other way and then your shoulders bent the other way. So you're just making this nice like curve S shape, like you said. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I, I think it. that's why I like that one. Amazing. Oh, okay. I like this one too, because of this little eye peak. The eye. Ugh. Look at him. Yes. <laughs> so good. That's kind of cool too. Do you do um like your your own styling or do you like let models kind of like do their, you know? Yeah, I like would say it depends on the that. shoot. Um, yeah. I would say for the most part, I do the styling, especially when it comes to just kind of like if it's like a shoot for fun. Shoot, yeah. yeah, exactly. I would say this one, this kind of happened pretty organically where Voss put these um, chaps on their Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, we need to shoot these. We I don't care these. when, but we need to shoot them. Um, and so Voss kind of brought the rest of the outfit together. And then the set design, we just kind of kind of put together last minute. Just wanted something with color. Yeah. But yeah, I would say for the most part, like I, I really love the styling and art direction, art direction part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do it, but I'm also, especially like if it's a set, like I love if there's an art director and a stylist and all of yes. that. So like a help. collaborative yes. situation. Yeah. Uh, yes, everyone can bounce exactly. Off each other. Oh, I love that. And what would you say is like, kind of like your starting point for inspiration or like what, how, you know, what gets you from like concept to like, you know, yeah. execution, I guess. Um, I would say it depends on if it's like a shoot for fun or a client shoot. Um, but I would say if it's a shoot for fun, I usually have like, I don't know, let's say like three or four ideas just sort of like swirling in my head of like, okay, I love this idea. I don't know who it's going to be for or when I'll do it, but I definitely want to do it. Yeah. You know, like I had this one shoot that's on my Instagram with these like red latex gloves Ooh, and, it, and okay. it usually like starts from either an object like a clothing or like, item or an object yeah, a clothing yeah. item okay, or like yes. an, like a de like a decade or an era it's so like the red gloves one was like okay this like i really want to use these gloves and i have this friend who she's like maybe like six two or six three like she's so tall so beautiful and she was like dude let's do it and i just figured like she's so long it was like her gloves being you know super long and lanky and it just sort of snowballed from and there. And she that. brought like her, the clothes she brought were perfect. Like these cool tights and we're like, let's bring flowers for you to kind of like, I don't know, like weave in between, like weave all your limbs in between these flowers. Oh, um, so yeah, it just kind of, kind of starts like that. And like the, um, there's a swim, like a vintage swimsuit shoot I did. And I collaborated with um, the models there because they all are vintage lovers. And I, oh, I love that. this like sixties decade of vintage swimwear. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It, like you said, it usually kind of comes from either like a clothing item or something like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And see what you just saw there was my, the camera gets like tired and it's like, Hey, are you still using me? Like it's just yeah. like checks in <laughs> on you. It's like, Hey, what are we doing here? <laughs> Is, um, when you're tethering to Lightroom, um, do you, do you have to like remove the memory cards like within your camera or any of that? Like, what, does that ever like uh, mess with the connection? No, I don't think so. I think it, I, I'm pretty sure I have a memory card in there, but it doesn't shoot to the memory card. I don't think it, just it goes does. straight to, to Lightroom. 
Yep. Nice. Um, but I will, so I'm shooting it into a hard drive right now. So it shoots, you can tell it where you want the shoot to go, essentially. Got it. It'll still put it into Lightroom. Um, but yeah, you can pick if you want it on your desktop or, or where it is like natively. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Which is very handy. Yes. Um, Tyler says adding movement. Love it. Yes. Bruce says, hello from New York, Lauren and Arabella. Hi, a chat. I'm intrigued. Is the camera connected to a laptop? Just trying to figure out how you did the shoot. <laughs> yes. Um, Bruce, you, you missed our whole little, little shoot session. Um, but this will be available for replay. So you can totally watch it again. And, and you can she, come back tomorrow. Exactly. We're doing another shoot with a different model and different Ooh, setup tomorrow. Okay. I love this. Lauren, yeah. you are killing it. I love, I love that. This is so different and I think it's exciting. So awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see we also have very sign that you are a good photographer doesn't matter what camera you use you can still take decent photos absolutely true that's awesome and yeah and, and that's a point I definitely wanted to make is like as a photographer I feel like I, I especially when I started I was like oh my gosh there's all this gear and I feel so overwhelmed and it's like I felt like photographers had to like love gear and love all of the sort of like back end part of it and I just was not that person. Like, I was like, I just want to take the photo. I don't care what I take it on, or, you know? And so yeah. I was so intimidated by all the programs and all the, you have to have all this equipment and all these different lenses. And it's like, really, yeah, if you just build your craft first and your style, yeah. and then it's almost like, you know, the gear comes second. You like, you get just what you need when you need it kind of thing. Exactly. Unless you love gear. And that's, that's totally different. That's totally but fine. I just, yeah. but I just want to remind photographers that you don't have to, be this like big gearhead to be a photographer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can be taking beautiful images with your phone, like, you know. Well, and I feel like now more than ever, like people are using disposable cameras to make like these beautiful like fashion yes. shoots. And like, like I shoot film sometimes and I shoot literally on my grandpa's old oh. Nikon that he had in his attic. And like, I it takes that. the best photos. Ugh, amazing. So you guys don't be intimidated by gear and just go shoot, go do your thing. And, you know, practice your, your creative eye is really where it's exactly. at. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bailey says, Hey Lauren, so cool to see you on a Behance live. Following your work has been so fun. Congrats on the move to Colorado. Aww, oh, thanks Bailey. That's so cute. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So let me see how many selects we have. Okay. Oh my gosh. I feel like <laughs> I don't even, I feel like that's even too many. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to slow release scroll slowly okay. that's yes. hard to say um and there's numbers right here in the yes. top left if you guys can see that so i want you to kind of just like start putting some numbers in the chat if you yes. see numbers that you're digging okay love that yeah go super slow okay. and uh let us know in the chat you know give us some numbers and let us know which ones your fave or your favorites and we can we can i'm trying to decide what my favorite is oh, i know <gasps> Okay, so far I'm loving five. I also love seven. I love seven. I'm loving nine. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. So good. Yes. Okay, and also 13. Okay, I, I just, I love that pose. The, I do the like hand. a little pouty. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like a little like lone cowboy. It's just, it you know, is, had a hard is. day, hard I know. day's work. I'm going to go back to the he top. Should've, he should have had like one of those little like straw yes. things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I also, okay. I love three as well. I do like, cool yeah, that kind of hips forward. Yeah. Do you ever find that you have to like select like, like, you know how when you have like different poses, mm -hmm. but then when they're too similar, like you kind of like, okay, let's, let's figure out which yes. one of these two is like, like, you know, the stronger one. Exactly. Like I would say yeah. like four and six, I probably should have dwindled down, but now I don't want to like mess with the numbers. <laughs> I know. Right. Okay. So we've got some people chiming in. Uh, Liz Kelly says, hi, Lauren. So excited to watch your process. My faves are four and eight. Uh, oh. Fairy. Oh, fairy. Fairy loves a lot. He's like four, <laughs> six, nine, <laughs> 10 and 11. <laughs> Oh my God. Wait, uh, it's time for all of that. I know. Tyler says five and 13. Yeah, five is great. Okay, five and 13. 13 is the pouty one. Okay. Um, Liz Kelly says 13. Bruce says 137 and 13. Bailey says nine and 13. So 13 seems to okay. be pretty. 13's getting a lot 13's of love. Get, 13's getting a lot of love. Also, I think 
four is getting a lot of love and eight. Yeah. Okay, you know, I'm gonna go here. And nine. I'm gonna make our favorites a two star. Okay. <laughs> Norsh is like, I like the ones that you'll choose. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's and like, you too know, many options. <laughs> when a client Are we overwhelmed? says <laughs> when, when a client says you pick, I mean that's the dream. Oof. Yeah. You're like you pick you pick the selects. I'm like, yes. Yes. Because I feel like we we know we know what the best we photo know what's is. Best. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's look at some of our twos here. Okay. Tyler says it's hard to choose. <laughs> it is hard to choose. Um, and it's so funny. I feel like everyone has their way of um, filtering, like their way of starring, like, and it's very personal to each person. Like yeah. some people, they do like color ratings. They do star ratings. Some people don't even take their favorites. They only take their favorites into Lightroom. Like they might start with Adobe Bridge and only take their yeah. favorites. Um, how do you filter or oh my gosh you're gonna laugh at me i so i always photograph both um raw and jpeg and i go oh. through the jpegs because it's Your like poor so computer. much it's yeah and it's um you know i just go through the jpegs i pull them up on preview and then i get a notebook and a pen and i literally Excuse numbers me? like Excuse i me? i write it all down i don't know there's something so like tactical about like writing the numbers and just like I have notebooks filled with numbers just just numbers wow <laughs> I did not expect that I'm so glad I asked that's amazing <laughs> now I will do that sometimes like yeah. let's say I will you know shoot in Lightroom it's and not then the I most efficient but you know I sure. like it <laughs> I get it but like if uh and then I you know if I'm sending like a bunch of selects to a client and you know maybe I send them send it to them in what is it like it's Adobe Lightroom, but you have a URL. It's like the uh, Lightroom oh, Gallery. Yes, you know what I'm talking about? Gallery. Yeah, yeah, I yes. know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So I'll, I usually like send clients that, and so they can kind of like pick and choose. Um, and then from there, like I, the numbers sometimes get off in Lightroom, and then the gallery. So I just write the write like the actual image number down, so I yes. don't edit the wrong yes, image. Yes. So, but I like you it. said, like you said, it's like it's completely personal. And mm -hmm. it's almost like a little experience too, because I, I love to put on some music or so, you know, something for sure. And it's like a, a little, little, mo little creative moment. A any excuse. Yeah. To like music podcast while yes, we edit podcast. Yes. I'm here for. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, fairy says clients you pick later clients. No, no, no. I don't like that. I want the other one. And then raging my inside my heart. <laughs> yep. Exactly. That, that is a double-edged sword when a client says, let's do whatever you want to do, <laughs> yeah. you know? Cause it's like, do they mean that? Do they actually mean that? I don't know if they mean that. <laughs> they think they mean that. Right. <laughs> Kelly says that is old school. <laughs> <laughs> that is old school. Uh, Fairy's asking, do you ever try to print your photos? Um, I don't personally print them. I will send them to a lab, um, to print them. I use Miller's lab. Um, and they do great quality prints. I thought I wanted to do the whole, like print out my own photos. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know if I want to deal with a printer and the ink and the paper. And yeah, it seems like a lot of work. Shout out to the people who do. Yeah. And that it's, it's truly like a whole nother craft. Like yeah. printing is an art. It is an art. Yeah. And, and that's also like, kind of like a very like tech, mm -hmm. you know, like it's very, uh, you know, technical can be Agreed. technical. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's our four okay, love favorites. Them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't know now. I mean, you could do like a few. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe I start with one. I'm trying to, let me pick the one that has the most like. I know you kind of mentioned this before the stream and I kind of wanted to bring it up because I think it's interesting. I feel like you were talking about how like your editing process isn't really quite as like, you know, um, you know, you said that you don't do as much like skin retouching yeah. or like you're very simple with with your editing, which I, I think sometimes like, it's nice, you know, it's like, there's people who like really go in and then there's people who are like very natural and kind of. Yeah. And I, that definitely is my stance on it. And I feel like as a photographer these days, you have to take a stance on like retouching. And when it comes to retouching, like for me, what I'm going to do is like mess with the backdrop and more of like, I don't know, like physical things. Like when it comes to skin, I like to keep it pretty simple. Like um, and we can get in more into that when we get in yeah. Photoshop, but, but yeah, like, I feel like to me, getting the lighting right is way more important to me and way more. I just find like the lighting more interesting than the retouching part of it. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, like, so that's why I wanted to do a shoot instead of just retouching. Cause I was like, right. you know, if we're going to talk about kind of my, like my strengths and what I love to do is the shooting part of it. Like, honestly, if I could just ship off all my photos and have someone else like retouch them, I you would, would in that. a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, I would like, honestly, like the part I love is more of like the color grading yeah. and yeah. the levels and that kind of stuff when it comes to like retouching, retouching. Um, and I, in, in a different type of shoot, like, you know, if I'm shooting for a tech company and maybe, you know, there's a model holding a cell phone or a laptop, like those kind of things take a lot more retouching as I'm sure, you know, like products and yeah, that's like yeah, that, like it's a whole that thing. takes a ton of retouching. <sighs> mm -hmm. So, and I've definitely done stuff like that where, you know, you have to recreate a whole box that, you know, was there, but you got the paint streaks were too streaky. Yes. So you have to just, yes. you have to just make the <laughs> whole box in Photoshop. So yes. there's a time and place for editing. Um, but when it comes to like people and skin, I try to keep it really natural. Um, yeah. For you, the last thing, more, it seems more like you're enhancing. Exactly. Yeah. Enhancing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not that. trying to like warp anyone's body or make them not look like themselves. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> okay. Andrea says, oh my gosh, I used to do that, but can't go back ever since cooling in Lightroom. Honestly, I should probably just do that, but you know, you're too far in now. I'm too far in now. Yeah. I'm too far in. Um, Cody says, figuring out printers is so difficult. <laughs> yeah. And the, yeah. you're always out of ink <laughs> and you're always out of like the one color and then the printer won't work without the one color, even though it's of not course. even going to print that color. Yep. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yes. Kelly says, just trying to print photos with accurate colors is a nightmare. <laughs> a nightmare. Uh, yes. All right. I'm going to go into Lightroom now and just start kind of Perfect. messing around it. and I can just kind of walk you through. Yeah. Walk us through my thoughts. Um, the first thing I have to do is crop <laughs> it. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I can't even look at an uncropped image, like just the ratio for me. Yeah. I see. I see what you mean. It drives me crazy. And I think that's my mom's fault. <laughs> Again, if you're joining in late, my mom is also a photographer. And when I started out, she, I just used to like use the original ratio that was, I thought that was cropping it. I thought like, you don't change the ratio. You just keep it the same. You could just, you know, make it smaller or bigger. Yeah. I don't know why, but oh my gosh. I'm four I, by three all day. Okay. Love that. Um, I think I just, because I know most of it's going to Instagram, I'll leave it uncropped and then crop it in like, it. you know, that's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah, but I, but I get it. I think I, yeah, I just can't even I can't even well deal it's an with art photo. thing for you, right? It's like yeah. it's like, okay, like what looks good in this right now as I'm retouching. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and one of the first things I do, I never do like auto, like I never touch this little dropper because I feel like it just makes things too blue for me. And if you look at my work, it's all very like pinky yellow. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And especially like with the harsh, the harsh light kind of mimics the sun. And mm -hmm. so I'm not going for the blues with the harsh yeah. sun there. Um, do you ever like, as you're kind of like art directing or thinking of your concepts and putting together your shoot, do you, I know there's like other photographers who like really like color is really big. So like, like they, you know, it's very, everything's very intentional with colors. Mm -hmm. Do you think about any of that like beforehand and, and how that will for sure into retouching? Yeah, I definitely think about that. Um, and I I definitely like to add color to a set. And I also know that color is what's what's there is just a suggestion, you know, like this orange, I mean, could be any sort of shade of orange or red or pink, whatever we want it to be. But as long as I kind of get some colors, some sort of baseline of colors that I like, then I'm happy. Yeah. And for this specifically, like Voss told me that they were bringing a red hat and it was kind of like cowboy themed. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's go kind of like, I don't know, like sunsetty colors with like the orange and the red crates and the yes. pink crates. And I also just happened to only have these colors of crates. I have an orange too, <laughs> but I thought that I'll let the orange background be the orange background. Yeah. Love it. It works. It works. And then, so the next thing I do is I crank the shadows way up. Okay. I feel like this is like my secret sauce. It's like really not a secret. Cause if you look at my work and you're a photographer, you, you, can you, tell. you know what I did, <laughs> yes. but, but I love to just pull out that detail. Yeah. It's, it's almost like you did that too much and then it's perfect for me. <laughs> it's like you went just a little bit too far. 
it's like what everyone like everyone else's tutorials are like don't like put all the slider (laughs) pull the slider all the way because it's doing too doing the most but then here comes little Laura and she's like, nope, I'm doing it. This is my style. Here's my stamp. (laughs) Yes. And that is, that is such an important thing that I learned starting out is like Mm -hmm. you go to school or you watch tutorials or whatever. And they tell you all the like, never do this. They tell you all the shoulds, right? You should, you should do this. You should never shoot red. You should never shoot stripes because you're going to get that moray pattern. You should never like you know, always have like this certain, you know, like a certain science when it comes to your lighting ratios and, and all of that. And it's like, it's actually just whatever you want it it's to do. Like there's very like, few yeah, rules. A hundred percent. I love exactly. that. Like, that's good. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause it's important. <laughs> yeah. There are no rules. If you yeah. like it and it looks good and clients are paying you money, keep doing, keep yeah, doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. Yeah. And that is kind of like the intimate thing about doing a editing live is people get to see all these things that like you're supposed to do or not supposed to do yes. and it's like well yeah you just you're just watching me break rules yeah exactly i love it uh biola and i hopefully i'm not butchering your name i don't know if it's biola or biola but she says um they say i just love this photo so much and fairy says me too <laughs> yeah um something else i always do well i don't know if you saw i just kind of like tweak the highlights yes. push those down a little bit sometimes i mess with the clarity mm-hmm Clarity is so sensitive. Like you can put like barely any in it. Barely anything. And it yeah. does something. Ooh. I love that you zoomed in. I can see so much of that detail. Dude, not to talk about the Canon R5 again, but like how crisp is that? Yeah. That's so amazing. Crisp. I love it. Uh Fairy says 4.3 is also my fave format, to be honest. <laughs> and, and I think it's it's a like a, a film ratio is where that comes oh, from. Yes. And I, that's probably why I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so honestly, usually the only things I play with in, um, what are we in? Lightroom is a tiny bit of color balance, maybe the exposure if I need it, highlight shadows, maybe some clarity. Then I usually come down here to these. These are new, I think, in Lightroom. Like I think, yeah. The, the wheels. Yes, yes. But I like those. And so I usually start like getting some warmth here in the shadows and this is such an experiment like you really just you just don't know until until you try until you try and i usually go like way too much to kind of see where we're going (laughs) yeah sometimes you have just like pull it through to see like what it does exactly you're like am i doing anything or not yeah absolutely so i usually make the shadows pretty warm and then i'll go cooler on the highlights depending on the shot that definitely is already adding that kind of like retro look that you are you know that you do yeah usually either go like a little bit blue or a little bit green i feel like this one because there's so many yellows going on i'll go a little more blue yeah amazing okay let's see anything else we need to do here I think I can do the rest. Oh, so like it already did the lens correction for you, huh? Is that because you tethered? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. Yeah. Because it was already like checked off the little oh. lens yeah. correction. and. Oh, thanks. I know, thanks, right? Lightroom. That was nice of you. <laughs> I didn't even have to do that. Nice. Okay, cool. Amazing. All right. So from here. Mm-hmm. So. If let's say if there was no background here, like none of this, and I didn't feel like retouching their skin, this would be done in my mm-hmm. mind. My would be like, okay, chip it. Totally depending on the client. If this was just like for an Instagram post, I'd be like, cool, did it. Done. But if, let's say this is for like an ad campaign, then of course sure. we're gonna give it the the extra touch. So I'm gonna go into Photoshop now and the way mm-hmm. I get there. I feel like this is another very personal thing. I go <laughs> Command E. Let's see if that'll do it. Nope. Is that just like telling it, telling you to go from Lightroom to Photoshop? Oh yeah, it's just. Photoshop? Yep, exactly. It's just nice. not happy. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes things fail, and that's okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, it'll get there. Oh, get oh there it. you go. Yay! Yay. <laughs> it just took a second. 
nice. Okay. So let's see where we're gonna start. I'm gonna start by duplicating. I know there's a shortcut for that, but I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like shortcuts are another thing that are like so so personal. So personal. Like I had a coworker that like he swore he could basically do everything he needed to do without touching a mouse. Like he just knew every single shortcut. That is that is a gift. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me either. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know. Mm, maybe I love your shortcuts. choice of words too and saying that it's like everything's like very personal mm -hmm. um, because even like in photoshop right like doing there's so many ways to get to a task or to to complete something yes. to do something on photoshop and like you know again there's a lot of shoulds right but mm -hmm. like it's all about like where what works for you and how you know exactly like what works for your process yeah and that's why like you should never judge someone's process i'm, I'm prefacing don't judge my process but <laughs> <laughs> because yeah there's no right way to do something and depending on the shot like i'm like okay am i trying to just do this quickly and efficient or am i trying to do this in a really like non-destructive way where i can come back right. and like re-edit this a bunch of times um so yeah they're definitely there's so many ways and also like Photoshop is a wild place. Like there is so much you can do. I don't so know if you much. remember, people would design websites on Photoshop. I don't oh, know if people yeah. still do that, but like you can, there, you can do anything and it's mm -hmm. the way you use Photoshop might be totally different than the way I use Photoshop. Some yeah. people don't even use photos in Photoshop. They just use it as like a, yeah. I don't know, some people, use graphics some, some people, and text. Yeah. Graphic designers like use Photoshop too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's incredible. I love it. It's such a it's such a good tool. And I mean, with that being said, you guys need to check out all the Photoshop daily creative challenges because yes. that is where you can learn like all these different tips and techniques and, um, you know, and just kind of like, especially because Photoshop's always, or just in general, all of Adobe's products are always changing and updating, upgrading. So, you know, that's where you can really learn like anything new, any new tools, you know, so definitely worth checking out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do here is okay. do our little healing, healing brush tool. Oh, um, and so I know that high frequency separation is a big deal, especially when working with beauty and really getting into the skin. Um, like and I, and stuff. exactly. And I definitely use that when it comes, yeah, like headshots, corporate headshots, if it's a beauty campaign, I'll really get in there. But on something like this, like I like to make it look as natural as possible. So really all I'm going to do to their skin is some healing brush tool and some dodge and burn. Nice. And not even intense dodge and burn. Okay. And so if you're not familiar with the healing tool, there's, what's the difference? Spot healing tool, which sort of like almost guesses for you. Like you're not telling uh, it where to sample. Okay. Um, and then I use, but this is the, why can't I, I can't remember the difference. Okay. <laughs> healing brush tool, heal, not spot healing brush tool. Yes. This one you sample Got where it. you okay. want, you sample the, so it's a, a little bit more precise then because you, sure. you get to decide. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Love it. <laughs> Norse says, I used to do that websites on Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Like I just remembered that the other day. I was like, wait, we used to have photo uh, websites on there. I'm sure someone um, someone out there still does. Yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, Cody says, yeah, I noticed as the photos were being taken, it was being lens corrected. And Andrea oh. says, the lens correction has been happening automatically for me too. But I think it's only since I've been using the R5. So maybe Interesting. It's oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And Fairy and Robert both uh, said control J or command J for duplicating the layer. <laughs> Thank you. If anybody wanted to know. <laughs> there um, and I bet those are you guys are the people that don't even need don't even need your mouse. Your mouse. You just yeah, you just shortcuts just, all day. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Kelly says, I remember my teacher showing me shortcuts in class on Windows computers, and then I'd go home on a Mac and couldn't use them. Oh stop. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Okay. I'm undoing some of this because I didn't like it. Okay. Sometimes with the skin, like we have this sort of like patch here and I, I think I made it worse. Yeah. Cause sometimes it like makes it, it makes it more obvious. Yep. Exactly. For sure. So for that in a second, I might get my stamp 
tool. Mm. Do you ever use the patch tool? Um, sometimes. I, I, I probably like should I, use yeah. it more. Again, totally like a personal thing, right? It's like what yeah. what works for you. I love it. And he I feel has like such nice skin already. I like, know. You such me? good skin. Seriously. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to just see what the spot healing tool does. Okay. See if it's feeling nice today. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm going to make it a little smaller. No. Nope. Okay. It's not feeling it today. Okay. okay. <laughs> Don't say we didn't try you. Okay. I know. Right. We gave you some love. <laughs> Awesome. I hope Voss isn't watching this part. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see their skin get retouched. It is. I I also just don't like being watched, like doing skin retouching. I don't know. Is that, I don't know if that's the thing no. for you, but like it's, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it, um, have you ever retouched your own skin? I, so I, y yes, I have. When I first got started in photography, I did a lot of self-portraits because that mm -hmm. was like all I could, you know, like yeah, you're free to shoot. <laughs> you were free to shoot. So yeah. that's what you did. Um, and I, you know, I did it to learn like techniques and stuff, but it was so awkward. I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> no, it is so weird. I hate like I I've taken a lot of self-portraits too. Um, and yeah, oof, retouching your own skin. Like I it what's funny is I actually love retouching skin. It's just so like it's like is soothing. It therapeutic for you? It's yeah, it's therapeutic because like <laughs> I don't know, you're just seeing something. It's, yeah. it's like you you get that instant gratification. Yeah. Of like there's a pimple now it's gone. Yes. Like, I just I love it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's fascinating to watching some of those like frequency separation um, tutorials and stuff too, where mm -hmm. like they start changing like or like smoothening out the tone of the skin too. And it's like super. Yeah. Like, that's, that's beyond me. Yeah. It's like that's, crazy. I'm impressed, but impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So now I'm just kind of like scanning for anything else like skin related that I want to take out, but I don't okay. see anything. So now I'm going to do a little dodge and burn and then I'm going to okay. come back to like, you know, their hat and like some lint and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robert says the master on shortcuts is Paul, Claudian, and Hotch. Oh. Um, both, all of those are, are Adobe people, Adobe live people. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I don't know if anyone knows how to get rid of these little previews that come up. Oh, Ooh, just, you know, that's a great question. Especially if you guys are sitting there and you just know, let me know because I don't know how to get them to go away. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. I know what the tool does. I mean, the yeah. dog is really cute, but. <laughs> that is so funny. I bet there's like a settings, like in like preferences or something. Yeah. If you guys know, let us know in the chat. Um, <laughs> Fairy says, I once retouched my own skin and it became worse than ever. <laughs> and I feel like when it's your skin, you take it too far because it's like, it's you and you want to be perfect and you just don't know you're, you're insecure about your own skin. So you're sure, sure. way overdoing it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely been there. Oh, Kelly's asking, have you used the neural filter for skin retouching? No, I haven't. What's that? Mm, I believe it's in under the filter section and it's okay. like a whole situation where like basically like Photoshop kind of like does the work for you. Oh. Um, and you just like take the slider and like start sliding it over. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it came out in the in the 2020 or 2021 um you know releases of, of okay yeah of tools I, think I did hear about that mm -hmm. it's I actually know. really crazy because they they there's like this whole other thing where you can like upload you know some like a picture of someone who has like certain kind of makeup and then apply it to mm. your image and it's like there's so many new things the neural filters is insane that is um, insane i'm pretty like, sure there's we're a in a new world a new world. I know even like sky replacement, like, like Photoshop that's will know what your sky, where your sky is in your image. And then re you can replace it with like, I don't know, like from a cloudy day to like a sunset or something. What? It's insane. 
Oh, and I also heard this is not photo related. It's video related. But Mm -hmm. um, my husband is a videographer and he was saying that in, I think, Premiere, Uh you can add a light source. So like it'll be someone's face like in an interview and you can add a light source and like tell the light source where to go and like how, like what type of light source, if you want it to be like sun or a lamp or something, it's like. That is insane. I know we've come a long way. A long way. What was your first, what was your first Photoshop? Which version? Oh, I have no idea. (laughs) I have, I have no clue. Oh, I started learning Photoshop when I was mm, 16, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea when that would be. Oh my gosh. I mean, I wonder if that was, yeah, I think I started at like when I was like 11 or 12. Um, Okay. Wow. And I had, what were you doing in Photoshop then? Like of my space layout stuff, okay. like making buttons and, 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 and then also just manipulation. Okay. Like I was about to say, I was like, sw- like swapping my friend's heads, like yes. dumb stuff like that. Dumb, weird stuff. Like I was removing my head. I was like removing my body. And so my clothes were left, you know, like stuff, yeah. weird stuff like that. You know, it's like yeah. when you were experimenting, right? Like, I don't know if you were the kind of person that like you were on Photoshop, you clicked every button to kind of like learn what it did. Yes. <laughs> exactly oh my god. let us know in the chat oh my god paint <laughs> let us know paint. in the chat paint what was your first, first photoshop. um photoshop <laughs> i think and let us know what you did on photoshop like yes oh my god yes let we're going know. nostalgic today oh it's, my god it's appropriate yeah, see it's appropriate it's on so brand. appropriate so appropriate um i i don't i don't know if it was the cs3 or cs2 that i had or if it was like elements or something. Was it the was it like a CD that you bought? Like a program that you bought? Like it came in a box. Yeah. 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 It was like old, old. <laughs> yeah. This was like my dad's. Like I remember seeing like a just like a case of like yeah. Photoshop was on a disc. And it was like, expensive. It was so, expensive. so like now it's like so much more affordable with like the creative cloud and everything. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Um that's hilarious. Oh, okay. So people are saying preferences. Cody Bear says you can turn off the tool tips in preferences. Oh, so it's pre- uh, Sham says preferences, then tools, then untick rich tool tips. Tools. Here we go. Showing you right here on live. Uh, show Ooh. rich. T- oh my gosh. And I'll get rid of that too. <laughs> you guys, uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I love it. Okay, hover over. <gasps> you yes. did it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm I learning. Love it. I love it. Learning learning love it um steve says there's also new updates today for neural filters amazing i'm gonna have to check them out too (laughs) okay oh my gosh nurse says floppy disks floppy disks floppy disks you guys but that would actually be a cool prop tool actually a floppy disk floppy disks yeah Yes, I can see like a whole, I don't know, like a whole room full of like old computers, old like computers, a stack thing, you know, yes, yes, that you use your toe to turn on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ooh, Fairy says CS5 trying to do some cutouts, being serious in CS6, doing some composites. Nice. Yes. A lot of compositing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now I'm burning just if anyone's okay. wondering what I'm doing. My favorite thing to dodge and burn are muscles. Ooh, it yes. really like I don't know. You just think of dodge and burn as like the face, but I love just like really contouring someone's muscles. Okay, okay, I love it. And is there any reason for you using like your the mid tones, like the range? Do you ever switch? Not a, not a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love not, it. Not a great reason. He's got some, they've got some really good tattoos. Yeah, dude, the best. Ugh, they're trying so to cover good. their whole body and I've, they're on their way. Yeah, I can see it. Amazing. And how do you go about um, kind of like finding your models or like, you know, what's what's your favorite method and, and how do you yeah. reach out and stuff? Um, I have done... I feel like I've gone down every avenue you can go down. Like <laughs> um, Savannah, where I'm from, I am from there. So I just had a really good network. And also that when I was a model, that's where oh, right, I right, modeled. Right, right. So yeah. like a lot of my good friends are models, which is awesome. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, I would either, you know, hire my friends for shoots or just do fun shoots with friends. Um, and then 
for bigger shoots, you know, with bigger clients, I would use an agency. And I think I definitely recommend if, if it is an important shoot and there is a client on the line and deadlines and budgets on the line, go through an agency because I've had, I've had good and bad experiences. Like you, you know, just finding an Instagram model, Mm -hmm. but I think that's fine if it's a low pressure shoot, but if it's a high pressure shoot, hire an expert hundred percent always, because if they don't show up or they show up late, it's the agency's fault and not your fault as the photographer who found them, you know? So yeah, that's such a good point. I could not preach that enough. Yeah. Yeah. But to say, well, you know, but there's always an exception like boss. I think I found on Instagram in Savannah hired them for this sheer text like, tights campaign. <laughs> and we just became friends after that. And then Aww. somehow we both ended up in Denver. That's amazing. Yeah. Ugh, love that. And so now that I'm new to a city, I'm like trying to find great models in the area. And so I'm working with some agencies and just, you know, networking, honestly, networking with people, you find lots of models. Yeah. I, I did do something that is, was totally, I feel like a female privilege where I was at a workout class, which, you know, if you're a guy, you shouldn't, you don't come up to girls in the gym and talk to Do them not. and ask them to mm-hmm. model for you. Nope. But as a woman photographer, I was like, Hey, I was like, Oh my gosh, I love your look. Like, are you, are you a model? And she said, no. And I was like, I'm having the shoot. Like, I would love to cast you if you're available. Yeah. Um, and she would, she was just like the most interesting like, looking, like okay. beautiful. Yeah. She's like, awesome. Like, here's my Instagram. And Aww. I was like, I, I recognize my privilege in that situation yes. that yes. it didn't come across. Well, you have to read the room. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We were, we were done working out if that helps. Okay. Great. <laughs> I think I forgot this over here. Oh yeah. A little back muscle. Okay. How satisfying is it like turning off the little oh my gosh. and p- turning it back on just to see the difference? Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Like, like arm, wow. everything. And even though it's just like very little, you know, like yeah. very like small adjustments. Don't but need a lot. And then I love getting this jaw nice and like. It's almost like contouring, like just. It, no, it literally is. It's makeup. Like it's. It is. Well, when, they, when we're contouring with our makeup, we're dodd and burning. Like as nerdy Basically. as that is, we're like the highlight, the bronzer, that's yeah. dodge and burn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Good okay. analogy there. Good comparison. Yes. Our makeup, our makeup people will appreciate that. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to like dig into their boots a little bit. Okay. Like this kind of retouching is so fun to me. It's just like cleaning. That's really cleaning. all it is. We're just yeah. cleaning up. Cleaning it up. Love it. Tell us in the chat, you guys, what your favorite thing to retouch is. Ooh, um, good question. Yeah. Let us know. What's your favorite Arabella? funny enough like retouching I used to love it a lot when I first got started but now it's like it's definitely not my it's my least favorite part of the process I love shooting Mm -hmm. and like seeing it all kind of come together same but but then again I also I don't know I think maybe I just need to be like in the right space um but I feel like I mean I love retouching just products but then also portraits too um but I do feel like the, I take that back, like retouching is fun because you get to just sit and like listen to a podcast, like, especially yes. if you're shooting and it's like long days and you're like hot and sweaty and like tired of being That's on, true. you know what I mean? That's you get to true. just like sit, you just get to like sit in a dark air conditioned <laughs> room and, and retouch. That is a good point. That is a good put, point. On, put on some good music or something. So podcast, in that respect, yeah. I do like it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Well, then then it's like you get to the final shot and that is really satisfying too. You know, it's like, oh my gosh. For sure. And you get to turn off all the layers or whatever and you see like where it started and where it's at. It is a very it satisfying. Up. It is, it is. Like I think they, I mean, some people make like satisfying like retouching TikToks <laughs> and stuff like that. Oh, really? How fun. I'm just trying to like do some little construction yeah, on the little, boot here. A little clean up. Ooh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> Tony was like, "Not, not hair." <laughs> oh, that that's Hair's gotta be rough. the worst. Yeah, the actually, worst thing. that is the worst thing. Yeah. Um, hot it. tip, you guys. There is a uh, there's like a little hair mascara thing that's amazing. It has like, oh, like a brush? oil or something. It's like a brush, and it's so amazing for flyaways. Um, 
I forget, I think it's called like hair feel or something like that. Oh. And it helps so much with hair. If you want, if you know, there's, there's just like little, little things sticking out. That is super, great to know. Super great. Cause that's usually all it is. It's just like tons of flyaways. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Cody says, I love retouching skin and lint. <laughs> it's very satisfying getting yes. lint off of clothing. <laughs> lint agreed. <laughs> Oh, fairy says retouching some weird artifacts because my sensor is a bit dirty. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Jason James says I like retouching leaves and oysters. Oddly enough, <laughs> ooh, I do kind of like retouching food. I, I don't photograph a lot of food, but it but is fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, has anyone done device retouching? I need to know because that's like a special layer of hell that hell. Yes. It's so specific. Mm -hmm. And um, shout out to two of my focus lab coworkers who taught me how to device retouch. Cause and they're both not photographers, they're designers. Oh my gosh. And like, I was out here just using the, like, um, what's this tool called? Oh, the this polygonal. one. Lost yes. Poly mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, connecting like to make a little device. And they're like, no, 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 no. Like you got to get in there with the pen tool. With you the gotta, pen tool. You're just recreating the, you're recreating the device. Like nothing Basically. is real anymore, but it's like, if you're looking at a device that's photographed, it's, it's most that it's of it's, like, yeah, most of it's not real. That's insane. Just like, that's what no one tells you when you become a photographer that you're going to have to like just recreate a lot things. of things are kind of can be kind of fake yeah yeah or like digital digital is the right word digital yeah yes. it's it's real but yes uh let's see <laughs> gareth says photoshop version one just playing and seeing what i could do not done any retouching since 2014 now use it for painting amazing okay. oh daniel says you could try using the patch tool to help retain texture um <laughs> yeah Robert did... says I try to avoid people in my photos if I can <laughs> that's so funny I feel like a lot of people are like that like they're like don't make me photograph people and I'm the opposite I'm like if there's not a person or a hand or a foot or a like face like a human element something I need something human yeah exactly it took me a long time to realize that's that's what I liked and that's what I'm good at yeah yeah for this I'm like it. zooming way out because I don't need to be that detailed for this dirt. <laughs> I also realize I need to clean my screen because I'm like retouching dirt on my screen. Oh you my ever gosh. do that? You're like, like you're the dust or the whatever is like on your sensor and it keeps showing up in every image. Yes. Yep. The worst. And you keep trying to make it go away and you're like, you guys, oh, why isn't this you, working? Yes. Please go get your sensor clean professionally. It is the best thing you can do mm -hmm. for your camera. You could do it like, you know, even every few months. It's usually not that expensive, um, but it's so worth it because if you try to do it yourself, you might, you might yes. mess up your, your sense. Take care of your gear. Yes. That's something I could get better at. Yes. I think all of us. <laughs> Ooh, fairy says retouching an unwanted reflection is hellish. I would rather delete it rather than wasting time on a not worthy reflections for touching. Yes reflections yeah. I the worst thing the worst thing I've ever photoshopped was actually um maybe a couple months ago mm -hmm. uh, and it was I was shooting this like corporate office setting and they had these beautiful arched windows like the windows were like this and I was shooting at an angle and they had these blinds that weren't working so like the the window is shaped like this so, like the blinds are like you know catty corner kind of like that like uh -huh. at a diagonal and they had all these cords coming down and oh I was like gosh. and we we tried to take the blinds off just because they were such a disaster you know like when you pull the blinds and one side's completely up and one's down yes. they yes. were all like that so I had to take out all the blinds on all these like curved windows recreate every like facet of the silver window oh and gosh. recreate the like window in the skyline it was wild that sounds like a process it was yeah I was like I don't think I can get out of this yeah but it, it made such a difference because those blinds were such an eyesore oh my gosh well I'm Going glad that you were able to figure it out yes I'm editing some lint here the lint 
oddly satisfying. <laughs> Just a little lint roller. Oh, uh, Shashank says, hello, I am new to this, so I don't get retouch. I don't get the retouching terms. Oh, <laughs> there are some weird terms. There are some weird terms. I know so, some of the tools like, I just, you know, sometimes you don't even remember the names of them, mm -hmm. but you know where they're at or the little icons. Um, but Shashank, I highly recommend you check out some of the uh, daily creative challenges and start kind of like learning, you know, all the different tools that are available to you and um, you know, that's like a super easy way to, to get to know Photoshop and, and some of the editing terms, retouching terms. Amazing. So much better already. Yeah. That made a huge difference. And now I'm like, is it worth taking this off the little edge here? Maybe the big chunks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Cody. Cody says retouching what she's doing right now, cleaning up spots on a photo. Ooh, Sham says, do you calibrate the color of your monitor? I do. Um, I haven't done it in a minute, um, but that definitely is important, especially if um, you're using like an external monitor that's not a Apple product. I think yeah. that's very important. I usually use the Spider thing. Oh yeah, the yeah Spider yeah. calibrator. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Oh yeah. Nice. Thanks for plugging in the link for the daily creative challenges, Cody. Amazing. I'm trying to think of a, another nostalgic um, Photoshop question to ask. Ooh. Uh, I wonder what is everyone's like favorite tool when they first got started and then like what's their favorite tool now? I think that's a good one. What's yours? Hmm. I mean, I feel like I use Photoshop so differently then. Like I know. So I started out as a graphic designer. Oh, um, interesting. I like my degrees in graphic design. Oh my and because I, I didn't know I wanted to be a photographer. So right. I like would design um what do you call it? Like email templates oh in gosh. Photoshop. Like, yeah, like design these templates, design like I don't know why I wasn't doing certain things in Illustrator, doing them in Photoshop. I, I guess that was just like the standard thing to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first started, yeah, I was just making like collages and stuff. So, and I probably wasn't using any of the right tools. Like <laughs> definitely loved a lasso tool when I first started. Now oh I haven't gosh. touched the lasso tool in like a decade, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'm team pen tool now, but. Yes. Pen tool is great. Oh, Shashank says, thank you guys. I got it. <laughs> okay. I feel like we're looking good. Yeah, that looks really good. So I think now I'm going to start on the background or actually I'm going to do some things in. Amazing. Um, let's see where I want to go. I'm going to go into camera raw. Because I didn't do this in um, Lightroom. I'm going to add mm -hmm. some grain because. What's a nostalgic photo without grain? I know, seriously. And grain is so beautiful. So beautiful. I think that's my favorite thing about like film photography. Just that seriously. Grain. Yeah. And it's like you can fake it digitally, but there's something about just a film grain that you can't, mm -hmm. can't recreate, but I still yeah. try. And I like using grain too when it's like when you've got like a gradient in some form, like on your image, it really helps to kind of like smooth out totally any of that banding happening in the colors so cool okay <laughs> fairy says quick selection back in the day but right now the pen tool lasso tool brush tool refine mass channel oh he's going off <laughs> <laughs> i love it Shashank all the says tools. Her, their favorite tool is the clone stamp nice. clone stamp yeah it's a very powerful tool like i feel like if i had to pick two tools ooh, it yeah. might be the pen tool and the stamp tool Yes. Dodge and burn would be a close third. Nice. Tony says clone as well. I really like the patch tool. That's so interesting. I need to like see you work the patch tool because the patch tool is just, I think because it it's almost like a, it's like combining both the spot healing and the healing or, and the, and the stamp, because it's like, it, it still retains the texture of what's around it. So it's not like it's, 
it's not, I mean, it is guessing, but it's still like, it's still figuring out what the texture is around. So it looks like seamless. Okay. It's pretty cool. Cause then you can decide, you can drag it and see, you know, like where, where you want to sample from too. I need, yeah, I need to use that more. Oh, I love that you're using your guides. Listen, your love girl it. loves a guide. Love a guide. And if you guys don't know how to, how to get your guides, make sure that your rulers are turned on. Yep. That's command R. Yes. And then to grab a guide, you literally just click grab and then you can Best. throw it away back there and you can do yeah. horizontal as well. Super handy. I think that's mm-hmm. my graphic design in me that just yeah. loves a guide. It loves a straight line. <laughs> Can't help it. Okay, so I'm tackling this orange background now, and there are a thousand ways you could do this. Like you could cut the model out completely and just recreate this whole square, but I kind of like the different gradations happening in it. So I'm just going to kind of probably pen tool it, make a square, and then edit color-wise around it. Like just the little spots that I need. Okay. And we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Love this it. is, an, um, how do you cut things out? I want to know how other people cut things out because yes. that's the other very personal thing. Like I feel like some people go lasso tool. They go with the, um, uh, what's the other one? Oh, this, I the feel quick, like it also quick depends selection. on like how quickly you want to get something done too. Totally. You know, or you what you're cutting not. out. Yes. Agreed. Yes. Let us know in the chat. Uh, let's see. <laughs> And Andrea says, my absolute go-to is the patch tool. And then Jason also says, you're so right about that, Arabella. That tool is the best. Dang. What have I been doing? <laughs> you got to try it out. Just just give it a whirl. Okay. I will. <laughs> oh, see. Oh, this is interesting. I'm going to get that nice and straight. Okay. Yes. Where did that anchor point go? Okay. Ooh. So I'm just like completely ignoring our model here. <laughs> That's all right. And so really like I'm just creating a bounding box. Like that's really all that I'm trying to do. Got it. But I just wanted it to be very precise. And I'm going to, I just hit command and I hit this layer mm-hmm. and that's what creates this shape essentially. Love it. And then, so now I'm going to get my stamp tool. I call it a stamp tool, I guess, a clone stamp tool, but. Oh yeah. Isn't it the same thing? Actually, I don't know. Now, now when you need the, the, the tips. Oh, I know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Clone okay, stamp clone tool. Stamp tool. Yeah. I just call it the stamp tool. Me too. Actually. We know it's like, we know what it's doing. We know, we know. <laughs> and for this, like I'm tempted. I'm trying not to get too close to it because that's why I keep that my perspective there. Yeah. Well, in the same tone, right? Too. Exactly. Yeah. Cause there is like little subtle gradients and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't want to miss. Andrea says for straight lines like this, I'd use the polygonal lasso tool. Nice. See, and, and I like that too, but the only thing about that is you can't go back. You know what I mean? So it's like, there where I decided to create a horizontal guide, I would have had to start over. So luckily that with the, with the pen tool, like if I don't feel good about a certain point that I just like laid, yeah. I can edit that point. Yeah. That's, so that's like, point. that's the main perk is that the pen tool is like super moldable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Completely. Know what you mean. Ooh, Robert says object select tool combined with a lasso tool, content aware fill. Oh, I forgot about content aware is yes. Like when that works, it is powerful. When it works, it is amazing. It is amazing. And it usually does a pretty decent job. And then like, it does. it's almost like a starting point sometimes too. Like you can, exactly. you know, it really, it does depend on what it is though. Right. It's like, yes, it kind of definitely has to be like the right thing for it to work well. Love it. Cool. So we've got about like 20, 
25 minutes perfect left of this stream i'm so sad this is so exciting and i'm Yay. excited that we have a model tomorrow as well right a different one a said? different model i'm so excited i don't want to like give away what the oh, yeah. set don't is give it away. don't get away because we want people to come back because more props <laughs> different model Ooh. like I, it's gonna be really fun i'm okay. very excited yes very oh. much very much a shoot i would do let's just say that very okay. me <laughs> amazing Ooh, Sham has a good question. Uh, are you a mouse or a tablet user? You guys are not going to like this answer. I am <gasps> on my laptop. No, 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 no. Yep. I'm like, using my like, trackpad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, we're, you know what? we're like I don't blame experts I don't, here. Yes. I don't blame you. I was same thing. I was, I was on that for a long time and then I think I just product product is oh, ridiculous. So different. And not to say I don't ever use a tablet because I do. And honestly, I, I love doing stuff on the iPad as well. Um, but honestly, day in, day out, find me with my laptop and trackpad. Nice. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. You guys, I mean, people edit on their phones too. Yeah. I mean, I edit those crazy windows I was talking about yeah. on my, on my little trackpad. <gasps> Lauren, that's I know. that's like kind of impressive actually. I'm, I'm not saying I condone this or recommend it. Just hear that first. <laughs> but I'm just saying that it is possible. <laughs> I just think of that one like real or meme. Am I better than any everyone? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the answer is yes because, there, you know. Look, that's pretty impressive. Like I feel like I would that would be a special kind of hell for me, but it's so funny and now like, now i'm just so used to it yeah i mean that's again it's a personal thing right it's like that's what works for you and and you know yeah. while i'm here i should just do i should just do a little save <laughs> a little save <laughs> i'm also really bad about saving <laughs> but okay photoshop is great because it doesn't like doesn't really crash ever now no that is... how, like it used to it used mm -hmm. to used to be a little you know because it was doing a lot poor thing it know? was doing a lot and it it's still lot. it's still doing a lot now it just it but can now handle it it can handle it it can handle it yep and with the r5 like the files are stupid how big they are like oh my gosh the I megapixels yeah oh my gosh so. um <laughs> fairy says trackpad lots of ha 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 <laughs> and fairy is like i expected that <laughs> Stop. Why did you expect that? Cody was like trackpad. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's everyone's saying very impressive though. Like, I think we're all a little impressed. Okay. Very I don't, impressed, I'm, actually, I don't I think. know. I think you guys are judging me. No, so. we're not. I'm not judging you. <laughs> look, look, we all do some, we, you know, we write down our selects we on paper. We use a we trackpad. <laughs> That's the thing. There's no rules guys. You don't no have rules. to use when you're creative. You, you can, can be a professional what, and use a trackpad. Yes, yes. Don't I'll, don't let anyone tell you what you should and shouldn't do exactly. when it comes to your creativity. If you like it, do it. Yes, yes. And <laughs> Nick Jones like, there's no rules. <laughs> <laughs> He's over uh, there with his like giant Mac. <laughs> uh, Humera says, really fun to watch. Oh, yay! Oh, Andrea says, gotta go, guys. We'll finish this in the replay. See you tomorrow. Yes, see Thank ya. you, Andrea, for joining us. Uh, yes, this will be available for replay. So, um, you know, if you have to head out, don't worry. Um, you can definitely watch this again and finish out the stream. But uh, so good. So good. So something I do that this feels like something I shouldn't do, but I still do it. I do the selection and then um, select inverse. Ooh, because now you're going to clean up that the edges outside. On the outside. Yes. Yeah. Like that feels like something Mark. that there's probably another way to do that, but here we uh, are. Hey, I mean, look, look, we've discovered that there are no rules. There's no <laughs> rules. <laughs> no, I love that though. Um, I think it's important to, to always be mentioning that, that like, there's just so many different ways so many different ways yeah and i think that's like that is the good thing about you know doing these adobe lives and witnessing them is you feel like i don't know i always feel less alone of like oh wow you do that too or yeah exactly like oh you don't know what that tool's called or mm -hmm. you know cause it's like 
you're never going to learn all We're of all it. very real people. Yeah. And <laughs> we don't, we can't, I mean, we can't literally, I don't, I mean, I can't remember every single thing on photo. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Yeah. Ugh, that's so like clean and straight. I love it. We love a crisp line. Yes. So now this is what I'm not really looking forward to. Ooh. Right. I saw, yes. Ooh. I was like, <laughs> yep. um, I'm scared for me too. At least you have a good amount of that like tan to sample sure. from. Oof. I already forgot the duplicate layer shortcut that you guys so kindly told me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on a Mac? I am. I think it's a command, command J. J? Yeah. See, I knew it. I knew it. She didn't want to do it. the wrong thing. You knew it. Okay. We're still in our reverse bounding box there. <laughs> Is this a patch? Is this a patch tool moment or what do no. you think? No. Okay. Okay. No. 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 I didn't know the limits of the patch tool. You guys I were think this is a really stamp, talking it up. Stamp okay. moment. Okay. The patch tool works great when you're either retouching skin or like background, like within where everything around it is pretty similar. Okay. Okay. You yeah, know? we're dealing with a lot of this is like nuances this is a, here. Yes. <laughs> um. Shashank says, everyone, please like the stream for Lauren as she is using a trackpad. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So good please so keep good. roasting the trackpad. That's freaking funny. <laughs> I deserve it. Oh, no, no. It's, no, I think you know, I think it's hilarious. I, I really do. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. But you know what? There's a lot of people who probably use the trackpad too. So don't, you know. No, I. It's all good. It's all good. I love it. <laughs> uh, Andrew says this is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And Humera yep. says so simple and effective. And then Robert's asking, uh, why didn't you use the um, selection? Then, hey, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Why did you not use a selection? Then you edit the yellow background. Hmm. I don't know if I understand. I don't, I don't know if I understand either. Maybe Robert, can you clarify a little bit? <laughs> oh, someone responded to him. Sham was like, because there's no rules. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, best answer. Great. Great, great answer. callback. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Amazing. I'm trying to kind of take some of their pants. And... Oh, yeah. That works. Okay. Okay. Look. Somewhere. Here we go. Getting somewhere. And like, I know that I'm kind of losing some texture, but once I zoom out, it's like, no one's going to care about this little spot. Right. Right. And actually that is, once you fix that, that's where you could probably use the patch tool and just kind of like, okay, uh, you know, select the inside and then drag it to that uh, place where it, it has that texture. And then it like kind of mimics it, which that's is a great, cool. that's a great point. Yeah. I definitely want to try that. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Oh, Fairy says, Lauren, it has been a thousand guesses who uses trackpad to make their work here. You are not alone. I do that with trackpad sometimes. That's awesome. <laughs> you are not alone. Love it. Not alone. Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, make sure to go follow Lauren on Instagram because her work is amazing. And I mean, whether she uses a trackpad or not. <laughs> The work is fire. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, don't tell my clients. They don't need to know. <laughs> they don't need, you know what? Clients don't need to know anything about your process no. except the final product. For what it's worth, they might not even know like the difference. So they're they like, oh, trackpad versus mouse. They don't even know mouse. any of these things. Yeah, perfect. They don't need to. They don't need to. No. Amazing. Okay. See, like, no one's going to care about that little, that little spot. Yeah, exactly. It was worth doing it, but. <laughs> hey okay looking okay cute. looking good i think i want to crop oh, mm -mm. oh. <laughs> not not that oh like a four by five i think so yeah just to get a little bit tighter in there yeah Ooh, so that it's like it goes off it's like a little peep yeah now that i did all that work for it but <laughs> <laughs> you know what sometimes you have to you have to Find it along the way. You know, I might I might have wanted a cropped version and an uncropped version. Yeah, exactly. Let me get rid of my and how to get rid of guides is command colon. Oh, okay, cool. You turn them on and off. 
I didn't know that shortcut. So oh, maybe I know four shortcuts. That's you exciting. Know shortcuts. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. How are we doing on time? We have about 15 minutes. Okay, cool. I might play around with like some little overlays, like okay. some colors. Amazing. Oh, like color fill? Yeah. And like blending modes? Ooh, okay. I, this is my favorite part. I love this. And so this is this is not my favorite part. So hopefully, oh. <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you can you can jump in here and be like, oh, maybe try this. You know what it is? I think that was the color fill with the blending modes was my favorite thing to do back then because totally. it was like, you know how you wanted to make an image sepia or like a little like yes. vintage tone. This was it. Mm -hmm. like, and I usually just do like but hmm. blending modes are so fun. Just so what's cool. your well, like what's some of your favorites like I mean I don't know I kind of just like play around until I find it <laughs> okay love it oh mm. Labma says hello just started to learn these skills <laughs> and Abdu says hi there <laughs> hi Okay. Ooh, Sham says, anything? Lauren, how feasible do you think of the golden Fibonacci ratio in design? How often do I think of it? Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of often, I think. Like, I don't know. And I think after a while, just it's sort of second nature. Yeah. It's sort of like the rule of thirds is like almost the same thing, you yes. know, like it's all kind of intertwined. Mm -hmm. I would say it's definitely an important part. <laughs> Okay, that did something. That's with it on. Love it. That's subtle. It's like just yeah. a little like worn in, you know? Yeah. So good. A fairy says, random opinion. There's nothing wrong with shooting a photo with a hard light. Change my mind. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good question. I was thinking about this today. What are some photography hot takes you guys have? Like a hot take is like, you know, no one else might agree with you. Oh, oh, tell us in the chat. Yeah, what's a hot take? What is do your you have hot any? Take? Do you have Ooh. any, Arabella? Like, I feel like mine is definitely like shooting with the super harsh light. Like, they tell you, like, oh, it's bad for skin. Like, beauty for beauty, you need to do like, like super big, flat and even yes, lighting. Exactly. Yes, and so I would like, agree. No. Like, yeah. my hot take is like, and honestly, like, the harsh light, it doesn't always make the skin look worse. Sometimes no. it just makes it look glowy and beautiful. Yeah. And then my other hot take is like cranking the shadows way up. Those yeah, I would say that. Yeah. People say you really shouldn't do, but yeah. Here we are. I would say, uh, yeah, I would say shooting in hard light, like in, in direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, it's really all about the angles, like, and just how you, you know, like kind of have the chin up or, or do, or, you know, kind of obscure the face with shadows or stuff like that but for product for sure like that really sharpened look like I love like yes. pushing the sharpening <gasps> yes. the like like high pass sharpening high pass like, sharpening just... yes I think you yeah, introduced but I think me to more that people oh. are starting to like warm up to that and like mm -hmm. loving it um I love it so too I would say that for sure Ooh, we got some people chiming in let's see uh <laughs> Fairy says crisp texture and one light. Yeah, Love one it. light too. Shooting one with light. just one light. Yeah, and th there's definitely a time and place for more complex lights. If you want that harshness, other lights, the shadows are competing and it just gets too messy. So if you want that harshness, you really only can shoot with one light. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Gareth just said, photography is violent. First you frame somebody, <laughs> then you shoot them, and finally you hang them. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, oh, we got some people chiming in. Oh, Shireen. <laughs> Phew, I thought I missed this. So glad I got to catch this stream. Yeah, Hi, yeah. Shireen. Um, available for replay, you guys, so don't worry. Um, oh, Fairy says, shooting JPEG is totally fine. Post-production is not whoa. necessary. <gasps> That is a hot, that hot is take. That is a hot take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm I love you for the hot take. I don't, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I could do it, but I know, right? I think I'm like maybe maybe it's for those people who like really don't do like are 
minimalist with their editing or maybe don't even edit at all. Fair. Yeah. I mean, like film, like you really aren't supposed to like edit your, you know, film photos. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lalia says, hello guys. And Shireen says, Ooh, blowing out the highlights can look nice depending on the shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> My hot take is, uh, Culling a very old school way. That's what it is. It's that pen is. and paper. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, I guess we've already established some of our hot takes. I know, right? <laughs> I'm sure there's more. I'll think of some more for tomorrow. Yes, yes, definitely. What would you say was the most helpful thing for you, like when you were first learning retouching? Mm, like what I was, mean, yeah. Watching a lot of tutorials for sure. Jessica Cabasi, which I know you're yes. a fan of her. Like, oh. Her skin retouching is awesome. And I feel like she doesn't overcomplicate things where yeah. I feel like some people it's like, they just make it complicated to be complicated. And mm -hmm. it's just kind of, it doesn't have to be as comp it can be no. as yeah. complex as you want or as simple as you want. Absolutely. Um, I would say that definitely that's something I learned early on, but yeah, learning definitely just taking photos yeah. just for fun and just retouching for fun. And especially like retouching however you would want to retouch it like taking self-portraits and editing your own skin and stuff like that like just yeah getting out there practice. practice for sure but yeah learning a range of um yeah just watching tons of tutorials and going from there yeah yeah absolutely uh, okay I'm I would say I'm basically done but one thing that's bothering me is like this little edge of the um crate of the crate yeah I just kind of like uh, like I either want to see it or don't want to see it. Right. It's out of like a, a part where it's like just right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Barry said, Jessica Kobesi. I watched her here last year. Yes. I watched was that it one last too. Year? I thought it, or was it? This there year? was a recent one too. This year. I think it was this year. I remember I hosted her. You did. It was that yes, was a great one. So I love that. I love that live. She's such a she's awesome. She's <laughs> so good. She's like Jessica Cabasi is our queen. <laughs> she is. She's the queen. Yes, she's the fashion yeah. retouching queen. Tutorials, all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and another thing to note that I love is when I get their eyes on this line. Ooh. Like when you get their eyes on any line, it's like ooh. Yeah, just, there's something just, about it, right? Yeah, I don't know if it's the rule of thirds or especially like if you know you get them in that point. That's yeah. very like art school rules but yeah how even, often are you shooting kind of like further out or like for versus further in um I would say very often and what was like uncomfortable for me was just shooting on a tripod like normally I feel like a lot of my work is crazy angles like I'm usually on the floor like every single photo shoot I think I'm not I like wear cute nice pants and I think I'm not going to be on the floor of this shoot and then I just leave with dirty pants because oh, I'm just no. like rolling around on the floor like I just can't help myself it's like if I see the shot I have to take it um yeah. so yeah I'm usually like on the ground or I'll have them on the ground and I'm like on a ladder or something Ooh, um that. but yeah like close in but I feel like most of my favorite favorite shots are this like a full body a full body where you see the set design you see the full thing like there's definitely a time and place for a close-up shot but yeah but yeah, I feel like my bread and butter is just this like, you know, a full body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just, because it's like, you can appreciate like the outfit, the outfit, which is honestly <sighs> my favorite part, the set design. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. Let me save this again. <laughs> Important. <laughs> and then I'll see if it went into Lightroom. What would you say was your, is your favorite shoot or maybe most recent? favorite shoot mm, that is so hard um I would say one of my favorite can I go to this oh yeah do it is this shoot oh my like, gosh show us real quick ah. I am obsessed with this shoot um the colors the colors and just like how the shoot was born so it was born because um this wonderful model Brittany and mm -hmm this model, Sam, like they're both major vintage lovers. Like they're I love that. Um, big on Instagram as well. You can like, you can find their Instagrams through my Instagram where I posted these, but um, like they both have like Brittany worked on the set of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel as an actress. And um, wow. they both do like tons of like set costuming and stuff, but like true period piece costuming. 
That's amazing. So all these bathing suits are from the fifties or sixties in like the, I actually don't, I don't think the swim caps are, but the sunglasses are. Um, and we just did the shoot for fun. Like we all got together. They live in, they all live all over Florida and they drove up to Tybee Island in Georgia where I lived. And that is amazing. we shot this at this like retro looking motel. So good. So good. And we did it and we, we sell prints of it, but we all literally just did it because we believed in the shoot so much and just wanted to do it. Yeah. I think that's something that's really important about, um, like being, you know, having a creative career too, is like, you know, you can do something commercially. Right. But Mm -hmm. I think some of these like personal projects are really, really good for you. And like, that's really where you get to kind of develop your style or technique and, and really just it be like you, like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. And everyone's info is tagged in my portfolio okay. here. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Like I would say of the shoots on my site, like the ones I did for fun, like this one, obviously for fun. Um, the shoot was Amazing. just for fun. It ended up in Vogue, literally just oh. shot it because me, this was a friend of mine who was a model and we were like doing a story about um, her journey with Lyme disease and oh, wow. it, we just did it for fun. And because we were so passionate about it and we believed in it, like, I feel like it turned out even better just because yes. we wanted to. Uh, that's incredible. This was oh, another. Shireen says these shots are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This was another, this was a quarantine series Ooh. called um, Renaissance women of 2020, <laughs> where it's just like fabulous people lounging in their different way of lounging. Oh. Yeah. Again, just for fun. Yeah. Amazing. This was another just for fun. But yeah. And doing work for fun that you believe in, it shows your clients what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like your clients don't know what you do until you tell them what you do. Absolutely. This was another, this is the one I was talking about with the red gloves, like how yes. it got, how we got inspired. Like it literally just started with the red gloves. That's amazing. And went from there. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys, we have to have just a few minutes left with Lauren. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat um, or any comments. Um, that would be awesome. Another just for fun. Just trying yeah. to show you guys. It's like yeah. there obviously is client work, but some of the favorite shots are stuff we did for fun because we believed in it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Let's see if the image went into there. Amazing. Amazing. Let's see. Oops. I'm trying to see the raw version. Well, it's well, kind of raw, but. Oh, yeah. Doing a little okay. reset. Yeah. Yes. I always mess up this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> go over there okay okay you know what i didn't want to do that anyways you're like so no nope. we're just gonna set you as threes so good and do that okay yes oh it just looks so good too like more tight in like that too for sure yeah i don't think i can make that bigger but Maybe you can toggle between each one. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. Four. Yes. Yes, Sir. boss. <laughs> yes. I love it. I didn't realize how crooked my camera was. <laughs> it's weird because like the boss looks really straight and then the camera is all yeah, kinds right? of twisted. Oh my gosh. That looks so good. There they are. I know. Obsessed. Just Sham says, how often do you use multiple artboards in one file? Is that like in Photoshop or in Lightroom? Illust- Illustrator? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Shashank says, dope shots. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, this looks so cool. I love that we took it from like start to finish. Just saw the whole process. You photographing. Um you know, kind of selecting and then kind of the editing. 
for sure you got to you got to see it all see it see it all and we're gonna do thing. it all again tomorrow so yep. you guys uh definitely come back tomorrow 9 30 a.m pst um we're gonna be doing this all over again uh thank you so much lauren thank this was you amazing. this was so fun i'm glad i just got to hang out with you for two hours Seriously, too and just i know chat and about to do it again kind of... tomorrow so i'm looking forward to it um looking forward to it and you know definitely come back and make sure to stick around for the illustrator daily creative challenge with andrew hawk rattle um following followed by branding and identity design with lola um so yeah thank you guys so much and we'll see you again tomorrow awesome. bye thanks guys